Coming up on today's Airborne, the Paul Poboresny Memorial is set for the Sunday before air venture. The Subsonics JSX-2 makes its first flight. An F-22 pilot reaches 1,000 hours, and the FAA issues an SAIB for PA-28 fuel selectors. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. The night before Air Ventures gates open on Monday morning, July 28th, a brief solemn ceremony will be held to honor EAA founder Paul H. Poveresny, who passed away last August at age 91. EAA chaplain Pastor Ed Riddick will lead the celebration of the life of Paul during the ceremony that will begin at 6 p.m. on Sunday, July 27th, and will be held at the EAA Memorial Wall. Also making remarks will be EAA Chairman Jack Pelton. The ceremony will feature a missing man formation flight, led by EAA's B-17 aluminum overcast and escorted by P-51 Mustangs. The approximately 30-minute ceremony will be standing room only and is open to all EAA members. When flying for sport and recreation, owning your own single-place personal jet has got to be pretty cool. Sonics Aircraft announced that Subsonics personal jet, model JSX-2, achieved its first flight and completed a successful series of initial follow-on test flights last week. Subsonics test pilot Bob Carlton said he's pleased with the aircraft's performance and handling. On a test flight last Thursday, he even managed to work in some mild aerobatics. A video of the test flight from last Thursday, which includes the aerobatics, can be found on the Sonics aircraft website. You'll also hear an engine sound that tells the story of something new. The Subsonics design team will be working to collect and analyze flight data in order to finalize published performance numbers for the new jet. When this final testing is complete, the Subsonics will be on the way to kit production. You're watching Airborne. We'll be back after these messages with more news and our feature of the day. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to support Airborne Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop an email to jim at aero-news.net. Reaching 1,000 hours of flying time is a reason for celebration for most pilots. In this case, Air Force pilot Major Daniel Magic Lee has reached the 1,000-hour mark for piloting one particular model of airplane, and that airplane is the F-22 Raptor. The 43rd Fighter Squadron instructor pilot reached this mark while stationed at Tyndall Air Force Base. Major Lee said, quote, This is a big deal for me and a historic moment for Tyndall, end quote. Major Lee has spent the last nine years flying the F-22 and logged 776 total flights in the aircraft. The Major added in part, quote, It's an amazing machine. It's rather overwhelming the first 10 times you fly it. But at this point, it's just as natural to walk out the front door and get in the car as it is for me to take the F-22 and go 1,200 miles per hour or swing around at 9.5 Gs, end quote. Each week, we share with you a sample of an online video one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. Final lift off of this is a great video of in-flight aerobatic action as seen through airplane mounted cameras. Warning, do not eat solid foods within two hours before watching this video. Search RA2 aerobatic maneuvers on YouTube. Here's some important information about the popular Piper PA-28 series of airplanes. The FAA has issued a special airworthiness information bulletin 
related to an issue with the fuel selector valve installed on many variations of the Piper PA28 models. According to the SAIB, the fuel selector valve can be inadvertently switched off and or may bind when switching fuel tanks and can cause a loss of power in flight. This SAIB also recommends the installation of a fuel selector valve cover designed to prevent inadvertently selecting the off position and the maintenance of fuel selector valves to prevent their binding. The short version of the SAIB is for pilots to make sure they know how to operate the valve, install a valve cover with a lockout feature as per Piper Service Bulletin 840A and assure the valve is maintained properly. P828 owners need to review the SAIB for all the details. Airborne is brought to you by some of the best sponsors in the aviation business. We'll be right back after these messages. ADS-V will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-V today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-V out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. In a letter to EAA staff that was forwarded to ANN, EAA Chairman Jack Pelton said that Jeff Skiles will be leaving the organization shortly after AirVenture this year. Skiles joined EAA in January of 2012 while on a leave of absence from his airline career. He served as Young Eagles co-chairman, was part of the EAA staff, and made substantial contributions to the organization's youth and member programs. Pelton said EAA especially appreciates all the time he spent on the road, meeting with EAA members and chapters through the grassroots pilots tours. Skiles said he would keep his connections to his friends at EAA and continue contributing through his writing for sport aviation and as an EAA volunteer and member. Last month, while the World War II Douglas A-26 attack bomber named Lady Liberty was headed to Hutchinson, Kansas to attend an air show, she suffered a left engine failure. The whole town was there to witness the lady's approach to the Hutchinson Airport with the left engine smoking, as if she were returning from a combat mission. The engine was a total loss and the CAF sponsor group in Enid, Oklahoma, is faced with installing a new or serviceable engine. Lady Liberty has several air shows scheduled for the 2014 summer season, but the cost of a new engine is threatening to cancel her attendance at all of these events. Donors, sponsors, and benefactors are helping to raise the $60,000 to replace the engine, but donations are needed from people who are willing to help in the efforts to get Lady Liberty flying again. Lady Liberty saw action in World War II and is the oldest A-26 still flying. For more information about helping Lady Liberty, visit www.a26ladyliberty.com. Any homeboat aircraft is always special to the person who built it, but EAA likes to recognize some aircraft that have unique qualities. Homebuilders headquarters will again have special parking at AirVenture for prior Grand Champions, Auto Engine Aircraft, home builds more than 20 years old, and for those home built aircraft that have more than 1,000 hours of flight time. Pilots planning to arrive in a qualifying home built should contact Charlie Becker at EAA via his email cbecker at eaa.org for a special parking sign that can be displayed in the aircraft so EAA volunteers can direct it to the proper parking location. This special parking provides a way for AirVenture attendees to easily find and view these special aircraft in one convenient location. Well, that's our program. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Please remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. 
Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition. And by the way, there are now only 13 days until Oshkosh and just four more days before Annan loads up and starts its pilgrimage to Whitman Regional Field. Annan will be there to bring you the most comprehensive coverage in the business.